Hey YouTube people, uh, I wanted to kind of show off my all-wheel drive scooter. This is uh, an M365 Pro that has been converted. So it not only has a motor up front, but also a motor in the rear. Get a better shot of that for you. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, my goal was to make a scooter that had all-wheel drive capabilities because the M365 does not get me up my giant hill that I live on. So uh, it really struggled on that. So adding that motor on the rear has made things a lot better. And you can see, uh, I'll quickly go over just the, the differences on it. If you look at the control scheme on the front here, it acts just like a normal M365. Um, but I do have this additional set of buttons right here. And what that does is allows me, if you listen closely, you can hear a second beep. There is a secondary dashboard in the down tube right here which is also wired up, and I'll show you how I did this. It's wired up to this throttle and the brake. And uh, you'll notice that there is no brake lever or brake wire coming out of here. That's because this electronic brake will control the electronic brakes on the front and also the rear, and it actually stops really well. I can come to a standstill even on that steep hill out there. One of the things I like about it is it looks mostly stock. You can see I have extended the frame or the tray where the battery goes there on the bottom. I also have some special brackets from M365 Custom Parts. Uh, and they also have this motor mount cover which is in anodized black right there. And all in all, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Uh, it's got some real power and I uh, have tuned the both the dashboards to specific, very specific settings so they don't fight each other uh, because the one in the stem is actually a regular M365, uh, basically a four button dashboard where this is the pro dashboard. So I had to make some adjustments to the firmware. But I really like how it looks. Uh, in general, I can kind of drive around and if I need some extra power, I'll pop this on, which will activate the rear motor and rear bat or secondary battery that's in the bottom. And both of those act independently. So if this battery gets low, um, I can turn it off and run off of the secondary battery. Or if the second battery battery gets low, I can turn it off, run off the main battery, or both at the same time for some extra punch. And they kind of uh, work off of each other. But uh, anyways. I'll get into my little build guide. You're welcome to stop the video here if you're not interested in that piece, but uh, as much information as I can, I'll throw into this video to show you how I accomplished this. Uh, but it really does provide massive amounts of torque if you are someone who needs to get up hills like I do. Um, so keep watching. I'll show you how I did it. So I've got my second M365 Pro motor that I intend to mount on the back here and uh, also an extra original M365 battery uh, that I intend to mount on the bottom, remove this other extra battery. Um, but part of being able to do that to getting the type of height I need for the deck extension right there is uh, moving to these 10 inch tires which will give a little more lift um, a little more ground clearance so got to get these <laughs> tires off and these ones in so all right so <clears throat> i've got all my pieces here to upgrade my m365 pro uh, i've got the extra motor a standard used m365 uh, controller and a battery i was able to pick those up for um, I think all these parts, yeah, with the exception of the motor, the motor was like 110 because it's the 350 watt, 
Um, I could have gone with the standard 250 probably just fine, but I really just wanted the red around the edge just for consistency. Uh, but all these parts together, I think uh, I didn't pay more than 100 bucks for. Uh, this was an old dashboard that I pulled when I upgraded one of <clears throat> my other scooters to the Pro version. And then a throttle and brake uh, that I had lying around. But it's all hooked up. And if I... The test was just to make sure that they could all be connected together without throwing errors. And uh, it talks just fine. I can connect to it over Bluetooth and it looks good. So uh, the next step is to actually get all this stuff mounted into the M365 Pro and also wire up these throttles. Uh, well, I actually didn't need these extra ones because I'm going to be using the, the originals and wiring them into I will use the second throttle though. I want to be able to control the front and rear wheel independently just because I want to. <laughs> so. Anyways, uh, we'll see how it goes from here. Okay, so right now we're taking a look at uh, the secondary dashboard. This is a standard M3651. And you can see here I've wired up the button to this wire that's going to go up to a uh, button on the dash. But the other thing we're doing is we're porting uh, the green, the blue, and this orange wire is actually the 5 volt, and this is black is the ground. Uh, the, five, the orange is a 5 volt, but it has um, a resistor in it, or sorry, a diode, an IN4148. And when you apply voltage on one of these diodes, if you do it from uh, this side, it will allow the voltage to go through. Um, but if you if voltage comes in from this side, it won't go through. So when we connect these uh, two dashboards together, this will keep them from from having crosstalk because when there'll be a diode on either side of this wire protecting both of each of the dashboards. So when the dashboard's running, it will operate the throttles and things like that, or will read the throttles. Um, but when one is turned off and the other is on, the voltage won't get to one board or the other, depending on which one's turned on. And if they're both on, it doesn't matter. But that will protect the circuits a little bit. Uh, it will also allow uh, none of the dashboards to come on when you don't want them to. So uh, hopefully that works pretty well. But this wiring on the on the secondary dashboard is going to be in the down tube of the M365. So uh, the one that is going to be uh, on the top tube will wire just slightly differently because we'll have to leave uh, these throttles and brake intact on that end. So I'll show you the other side once I have it up and going. Okay, so now the only thing I've done here is I've just put it in a plastic uh, Ziploc bag just that I've cut up and taped it down so it maintains uh, some semblance of waterproofness you know, as it lives in the tube. So I don't think water gets down there anyways, but better safe than sorry. And uh, got all my leads good to go and it's wrapped up tight. This also helps keep all the wires in place so they don't come loose, they don't rattle around nearly as much. So hopefully that little package serves as the brain for the second motor. Okay, so I now have the main dashboard hooked up. And I've got the green and the blue and the black wire spliced into. And then the orange wire uh, actually has one of those diodes. And that diode is facing this way with the black end going this way to let voltage out but not in and then it hooks into those red and then those go down and connect to the second dashboard and what that really is doing is letting these signal wires go up and read the throttle and the brake readings and send it back to the dashboard so it can also uh, use those values to control the scooter and it's got its connector the main dash has its connector so we can use the two motor controllers to control everything all right, I've got something of a test set up here. Uh, I've got the primary dashboard wired up and hooked into the brake and 
throttle and I have this button that's wired up to the second dashboard to turn it on and off and the throttle sensor wires up here with the diodes on each end so let's try the primary dashboard looking good um, looks like it's working here I'll try a little bit of a a little bit of a throttle here, if I can. It's working. So let's try also enabling the lower dashboard by pushing this button. That's got it on. And now might be hard to do, but I'm going to try to see if I can make this motor spin. Alright, so I'm getting close. I uh, just need to mount this motorized wheel. Got the casing all done. Dashboard's wired up. All the wiring is good. Just need to get this motor installed and mounted. And I've got my kit here from M365 Custom Parts and it took about 12 days to get here from Croatia beautifully machined and hopefully I can find a way to to fit them on I've got a completely stock uh, M365 Pro frame and I've heard that you can uh, just drill out the side that you're going to be using uh, rather than cut a notch in it you should be able to drill it out so we'll see what that looks like in a minute here but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. All right, so you can see the drill out process. Now what I did is I just started with a smaller drill bit and then worked my way up to, you want about 15 millimeters. Um, I couldn't find a 15 millimeter drill bit, uh, but the idea is, is this nut right here will be on the outside and in fact, I'll, sh I'll show you right down here. So this, this with the slot open, this one is going to be on the side with the brake. And it'll go like that. And if the hole's big enough, you can fit that nut up from the outside through the hole like that. And this piece will go right on top of it, which locks it in place. So I've got that side drilled out and it's ready to go. Um, but now I've got to get this side done. So I go up to basically a half inch bit and then I work my way around to make it big enough to, to fit the nut just perfectly. So uh, that seems to be working for me. So we'll see how it goes. So yeah, you definitely have to cut this one side out in order for the cable to clear. Uh, unknown if we need it on that side. Hopefully we don't. I don't think we do. This side for sure to be able to get the cable to go through. Um, it's also a lot of uh, planning and making sure you get your nuts through. Uh, these connectors will not fit through this nut here. So that means you're going to have to cut the wires and resolder them. Just so you know. But there's no way to get it through there. Okay, so I got it all assembled and did some test rides and the first thing uh, that I realized with this kit is my X-Tech brake setup. There's no way it's going to fit. It's too close to the motor. Um, so what I should have done is I should have gotten the five uh, screw kit and just use the standard brake set um, but it's too late for that and uh, the other thing I realized is the electric brake with both uh, front and rear on it is very <laughs> it's very strong it can get me to a standstill on a really steep hill uh, quite easily 
Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is actually just remove this disc brake entirely because with the motor on this side, you'll see that the air tube is inaccessible. So what that means is anytime this air, this tire gets low on air for whatever reason, you know, maybe you let it sit through the winter and you need to pump it up, you literally will have to remove the entire motor mount screws, drop the entire tire out, unscrew the disc brake, and that is a giant pain <laughs> to have to deal with. So um, I'm just going to move, remove the disc brake entirely and use electronic brakes. If it's good enough for the Unagi scooters, it's probably good enough for me. Um, and always knowing as a last disc scenario, uh, I'm going to have to kick the, uh, the back of this in and step on it to, to stop me if I got an emergency braking situation. But anyways, that's just thinking everything through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the brake line um, and the disc brake, get those completely out of the way, save a little weight. Um, this thing it <laughs> cruises up hills. It's it's uh, pretty pretty decent indeed. So I'm going to do those few adjustments and I'll show you how I am programming the front and the rear motor. I don't know if I'm doing it the best way, but I'll show you the way I'm doing it and we'll go from there. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this look at my M365 dual motor all-wheel drive project. And uh, if you have any questions about the build, go ahead and leave a comment on the video and I'll get back to you. Uh, also, go ahead and subscribe because I'll be doing some performance videos uh, letting you show how the machine runs uh, and how fast it accelerates. And I'll answer any of the questions I get in the comment in those future videos as well. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.